This is the Hard Thing Podcast. Today, we are overcoming average. Welcome back to another episode of the Hard Thing Podcast. This is the podcast that helps you overcome average, step up above mediocrity, all by doing hard things. Our goal here is to help you improve your life in meaningful ways by doing those hard things you know you need to do, but you've been avoiding, or maybe you're too afraid, or whatever reason. We want to give you the tips, tricks, tools, tactics, whatever you need to make market improvement in your life, be a better person, and have more joy and fulfillment. And to do that, we are interviewing guests who have been there, done that, done hard things, and can give you the tips, tricks, tools, tactics, again, whatever you need to do that. We are overcoming average. That's our, our, that's our goal. We're here to help you make those changes. And I'm excited for today's conversation. You're going to hear from me and a guest. Before we get to that, one quick announcement. <clears throat> Actually, two. Excuse me. Go ahead and go to our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash The Hard Thing Podcast to join with other like-minded individuals doing what you're doing, trying to make a difference in their life, make changes, and become better people. There, you can join up for free and band with your tribe. Next, go ahead and help us raise $1,000 for the nonprofit charity Operation Underground Railroad. They are a, a nonprofit organization that goes undercover to rescue kids from sex trafficking. Uh, sex trafficking is bad. We all know that. We all want to put a stop to it, and you can do that today by joining us in our goal to raise $1,000 for them. Go to GoFundMe.com slash overcoming dash average. All of the money goes straight towards Operation Underground Railroad to helping them rescue kids. That's something we can all get on board with, right? Now, let me tell you about today's guest. Today, I interview Robert Farrington, who started The College Investor. What he does is he helps college-aged people figure out how to do college without going into debt, or if they do go into debt, how to pay off that debt, as well as how to start investing. Uh, he talks about money, and we talk about a lot of we talk a lot about psychology as well today, because as we all know, psychology has a lot to do with money. I found today a, a very insightful conversation, very fun. Honestly, uh, we had some laughs, and uh, well, you know what? Enough for me. Go ahead and listen to my conversation with Robert Farrington. All right. Well, thank you for being on my show, Robert. Uh, I'm very excited to have you and on the show and have this conversation with you. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Perfect. Uh, so let's start off the show asking the question that I've asked so many guests before. Robert, what is the hardest thing you've ever done? I mean, shoot, it's like the culmination of my life, I guess you would say. It's not, I, you know, honestly, I didn't come from a place of adversity or anything like that. So I don't want to preface it that way. But the hardest thing I think I've ever done is, you know, taking care of my family's and my own financial life to provide the life that I want to do. And I know that seems very vague, but I think that's, that's really the hardest thing I've ever done in my life is get from, you know, college kid that had no idea to what, I'm, what I wanted to do in life to married two kids and being able to support them and provide for them and live a life that is on my terms and fulfilling. And that, and that little journey, it's a little arch there of like maybe 10 years, has been the hardest thing I've ever done. Wow. And you say it's kind of a vague statement. I don't think it's very vague at all. I think that's something that a lot of people relate to. And I'm actually very appreciative that you phrased it that way, specifically just because for those of you listening in the future, we're recording this during COVID-19 pandemic, the end of the summer. Uh, the nation is in a very strange place right now. There's a lot of turmoil. And I think it's because people forget that all of us have basically those same desires to, you know, find a way to have some money in our pocket, be able to go home to people we care about and not, not, or at least find ways to diminish our worries for tomorrow, which is from what I, from what I know about you, it's what you help people do. You help them figure out how to lessen those worries of tomorrow because of actions in their past, like student loan and student loans and things like that. So I'm very grateful that you phrase it that way. Yeah, you know, it's hard because like, you know, some people might have this culminating event or I got through this period of time. But honestly, like for me, it's been a series of small choices every single day that have compounded themselves to get me to the end goal. And, you know, sometimes you're going through the fog and you can't really see where you're going. Other times, like, you know, like what you need to do, but it's hard to get there. But it, they're, they're all a, a series of smaller choices. Like, I don't 
I sadly, I don't have that one defining story, but I do have a series of defining stories, but with the overarching goal of, you know, being able to provide for myself and my family and raise some kids. I always say my, my goal is to raise two happy, kind kids that are good with money because like, I don't care what they do in school. I don't care anything else. But if you're a kind person and you're good with money, like every door in this world will be unlocked to you. Mm -hmm. I I love what you said there. And uh, my, my personal opinion is that at least presently, they don't do an extremely good job teaching you how to be financially savvy uh, as far as being good, I, I think they kind of just cover their bases there. They don't necessarily teach you how to be good unless you take ethics. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I love how you, how you phrase that. Yeah, well, it's so hard too because no one really teaches you. I mean, it's one of those things that most of us just like absorb through experience, right? Like you see how your family acts with money. You see how your friends act with money, your siblings, right? And no one says like, hey, This is the lesson. No, like it's just you learn the lesson by watching and seeing. And sadly, uh, you know, things perpetuate. So if you see someone that's poor with money, your parents are poor with money, you might be. Or if you're surrounded by spenders and, you know, all your friends are out buying the latest shoes or, you know, new cars, like it just, it it, it comes off on you and, and it makes you want to do that. And that's what's so hard. It's, you know, the math of money is simple. You learn that in kindergarten. One plus one equals two. Like that's as deep as money math gets. <laughs> it doesn't get any harder than that, but it's the psychology, man. It's the feelings. It's the emotion. It's family pressure, friend pressure. That's the harder stuff to kick, man. Yeah. And I, I especially love how you previously had mentioned that it wasn't any specific moment, but it was a series of small choices. And sometimes we feel like we're in this fog. I think that alludes to what you're talking about, the psychology. I'm really, lately I've been preoccupied with this concept of the middle, where it's always easy to start a new goal. And then when you're close to the finish line, it's kind of easy to, you know, sprint towards the end. But in the middle is where you start kind of wondering, like, why am I doing this? You know, and I think that's what you're talking about with the fog and the psychology and all those micro decisions that you made. Absolutely. And that's the hard part too, with like talking about building wealth, right? Like I talk a lot about getting out of student loan debt. It's the same thing, like starting getting out of student loan debt, fun. Paying off your loans, fun. (laughs) That whole middle period of time is a struggle because It it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere, right? Because like you're making these payments every single month and like your loan balance, it's one of those things like it starts off so slow and like the progress isn't really there. And you look back and you're just like, why? Like, what's the point? Like, I'd rather out actually go out and spend that extra money on a nice meal because like the gratification's better. Mm-hmm. Because like, I don't know, I feel like we're wired as humans. At, like we're so short-term thinking, right? Like, I don't know if it's social media that's done it to us or the world that we're living in. But like, man, if I don't feel good right now in the next five minutes, it's not worth it necessarily to do this longer journey. And like our minds just don't work that way as well as it does for the short term stuff. I agree. And, and I think that especially with money, the, it's so easy to visually and, and you know, centrally feel the, the benefits of spending money because you spend money and you immediately get something. Whereas if you don't spend money, there's no change whatsoever. And so you're like, nothing happened, even though you did make a good decision in the right direction. Well, it's like, it's the whole thing about investing too. Like I love, like if you're like in your twenties, man, you, you need to throw as much money as you can into your investment accounts because time is, is your number one ally. But the hard part is, is that it's another slow process. So like, let's just say you put a hundred bucks in a savings or an investment account and you make 10% this year. Well, you made $10 and you're like a whole year. And I made $10, like, it doesn't feel really good, right? Yeah. But like, when you start getting that extra compounding every single year, every single year for 30 years, it's like, now you're really making big bucks. But like, it's so far down the road, it's, it's hard to visualize, it's hard to see. And, you know, and people judge you for your choices, man. That's the other hard part. It's not just your own psychology, but friends and family and peer pressure and, and work colleagues and everything else that are like, they're just judging. Yeah. Like if you, if, if people see you bringing, you know, sack lunches to work and, and, you know, maybe you're trying to lose weight or something and you only have rice and a piece of chicken or something like that, people will be like, hey, is everything okay? Like, are you struggling financially? Even though like, you're just trying to make good decisions, you know? 
Totally. I mean, there was that meme on Reddit last year that it got proven false, but I mean, everyone related to it. Whereas like this guy posted a picture of that letter and it said like, Hey, we noticed that you're, you're driving up to work in like a 20 year old Toyota Camry. Uh, you know, that really looks bad for our clients. Like we don't want our sales reps to show up at someone's office in an old car like that. It gives us a bad brand reputation. Can you come talk to us and see how we can help you finance a new car so that you look reputable? And then there's this whole letter and everyone was like, seriously, like that's horrible. But like people think that way. They don't always put it down in a letter and that, you know, an employer could never say that to you personally. But you know, I guarantee you there's people out there that feel that way. Like they roll up in their old car. Meanwhile, like sales rep number two over here has a Beamer and is like, why are you still, you know, rolling in that old car? And it's like, well, my old car's paid off and you're financing that thing and paying a thousand bucks a month. That's why I'm doing it. But like, the judgment, the peer pressure, like it's hard. Yeah. And, and it's really funny because I feel like, especially for millennials, uh, you know, the people that you work with primarily comparing themselves just normally is a huge issue that they deal with. And so I, th- I find it very fascinating that that is also a psychological problem. They deal with and money. don't get me started too on like <laughs> this, like generalizing. I hate generalizing because yeah. the media does it. Everyone does it. Oh, like millennials are poor yeah. or, you know, they're struggling with student loan debt or they're lazy or they don't know how to communicate. Man, it's like, I'll show you a boomer that's just as poor and just as lazy oh, yeah. as any millennial. Yeah. And there's plenty of ultra wealthy millennials. And then you think about the age range too, man. Millennials go from like almost 40 this year down to like their mid 20s. It's like, yeah, you know what? The 40 year old millennial is probably got a lot more money than the kid that just graduated college two yep. years ago and is mm-hmm. just getting started. It's like, God, stop with the generalizations. That's the, I think the root cause here is you got to do you. Like sometimes you got to turn off the put your headphones on, ignore what your friends, your family is saying, ignore what the media is saying, like set your own path and don't necessarily fall into the stereotype because I promise you, once again, it's like the series of choices. Like you start making small choices for yourself. You can better yourself. You can put yourself in a better spot. Um, but it, it's that hard part. It's overcoming the psychology, overcoming that peer pressure. Oh yeah. And, and I bet it, it definitely takes, uh, it, it itself is a journey, I believe. Um, just a psychological one. So I'm, I'm curious, where did your journey start? You said you had the goal of just providing for your family. But at yeah, what point- I mean, yeah, I'll tell you like, so I was always like an entrepreneurial side hustler kind of kid, right? I, I loved I was selling candy bars out of my backpack in middle school. I take my, my mom would take me to Costco and I'd buy like the 24 pack. Excellent. Right. And then I would dole them up and I'd sell them for like 50 cents <laughs> at break and lunch. And then I would double my money and I'd reinvest and buy another box. That's awesome. And then, you know, I, I'd use that money. I don't think it went anywhere. I use that money to play video games, right? I, I'm going to date myself, but like I went to Blockbuster because my parents wouldn't let me um, <laughs> buy like an Xbox, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. you could rent them at Blockbuster for the weekend. It. So I'd rent it and I'd play video games. So anyways, that was like my start. And I'd always been entrepreneur. I'd always been side hustling in college. I started actually selling on eBay in high school. I sold on eBay through college. I started my website in college. But, you know, honestly when I graduated college, I also like did a lot of things that like everyone does. I took out student loans to pay for school, right? Like I didn't even think twice about it. It's just what you do. You get this email from the financial aid office. It says, here you go. Click here. Boom, boom. You're enrolled in classes. No thoughts. So by the time I was said and done, I had $43,000 in student loans. And, you know, I thought I deserved that new car. So as soon as I graduated, right, I went out and bought a brand new Acura TL, which a sweet car. I loved it. But like I had a $700 a month car payment, right? Like I did these things because I deserved it. I graduated college. I had a job and I was making like 40,000 bucks a year. I deserved that new car, which like in hindsight, so stupid, like such a waste of money. Mm-hmm. But we fell through that. But you know, it was really when I like met my wife, And, you know, she's like the financial analyst, right? She's a very numbers oriented individual. And she's just like showing, breaking it all down, right? Like, you know, this is costing you this and you need to do this and this. But, you know, if we actually throw all of our money towards our debt, like we can knock it out so much faster and it would save us more over the course of five years, seven years, breaking it down because you're not paying that interest, right? You're not paying all that extra stuff. But like, it also meant like we had to really focus and have a plan. And I felt like creating that first plan was key. 
And, and so that was really a big part of it was my wife kind of laying it all out there. She had it all in Excel, man. Like she, like I said, very analytical. I'm not the analytical one. I like using apps. I like using things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but she laid it out. And then I combined that with that plan with then earning more. So I still side hustle, man. I started going to estate sales, garage sales. I turned in like one of our bedrooms into like a whole pack and ship area, you know, laying stuff out. And we were selling stuff to about a $2,000 a month profit. Wow during this period of time by buying and reselling. And so between working full time, flipping stuff on eBay, we were able to eliminate all of our debt, car loan first, then the student loans, everything was gone in about three and a half years. Um, and that was really the first pivotal moment because here I am in my early mid twenties, right? Debt free and now able to start going in a much positive direction in terms of wealth building and moving on. Wow. Uh, a couple questions to kind of dig in there. Um, yeah. You start off your entrepreneurial journey selling candy bars. Where in the world did you get that idea? I don't know, man. I just, I knew, I think I started having candy bars. Like, I think I got one like at Halloween time. And then like, my friends were like, I'd give you like 50 cents for that, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then I was like, yeah, I could do this again and again. And then, you know, I was like, well, like vending machines do it. And so like, you know, all these, this was back to like when Costco was very like more business focused, right? Like, I don't know if you remember these days before Costco was so mainstream. This was in the the nineties, I guess, man, I'm really dating myself, but you know, like it was like, you had to like, originally you had to have like a business to go to Costco and they opened it up to like the general public. You still had to buy the membership, of course, mm -hmm. but like their, their business stuff is so like people would buy these candy bars to resell at offices or vending machines. And, stuff. and I was like, I could buy that 24 pack too. And I could do the same deal. And so that's what I started doing. Wow. Again, it's just uh, opportunity, you know, meets willingness to take it, I guess. Uh, right 100%. Place, right time. And that's it with anything though. Like, what are you doing with your time? I think that's the more important thing is like, I'm already here. I'm already doing this. Like, can I make this negative into a positive? Can I spin this to actually earn some money? Um, I think that's the key, especially when you're young. Uh, before you have kids, because I mean, kids take that time. They make it a lot harder to do things. But when you're in high school, when you're in college, when you gra like just graduated, if you're kid free, man, like, Use your time to earn because it's a much harder thing to do when you have a family. And actually speaking of family, uh, to me, it's fascinating that you were, you know, you were kind of on the, the mainstream track, I'd say. And, and then your wife was like, hey, maybe we should do things a, a little different. What was that conversation like when she kind of, you know, laid it, when she laid it out for you? Were you a little bit hesitant? or anything like that. And I'm asking mostly to, to figure out if there are listeners who maybe have their spouse that they don't want to think this way, what are some things that they might do to make it easier for their spouse to understand and kind of breach that topic? I mean, once again, it goes back to the math. Like I'm a big believer in the numbers, like show me the numbers, right? And I think that's the hard part is there is this mainstream approach, like you make your minimum payments and you pay it off. But like, what if I told you, you could save $10,000 and all you had to do is pay off a little bit more every single month. Like, why wouldn't you do that? And I think that was really the eye opener for my wife is like when she laid it all out and she's like, hey, you know, like if we actually made this extra payment, if we like took all of our extra money every single month and threw it at the car loan, we didn't have that car loan. And then we took all that extra money, which is, it's called the debt snowball at this point in time. If you want some real terms where you snowball, you take one debt, you pay it off, and then you roll it to your next debt. And then she's like, you take that whole amount of car payment and you throw it to your student loans. It's like, boom, they're all gone. And then we could take that whole amount. And then this is where she started kind of building the financial future, right? We take that whole amount, we could get it for a house. And then, you know, and so like, then you start seeing like more wealth building goals. Like we're getting out of the negative and then you're moving into the positive. And then you can start even talking about more things as you go down the road and continue this path. Like maybe we can like retire, maybe we don't have to work as hard or maybe we can, you know, travel more, whatever that goal is for your family. And I think it, that's the more important thing is you phrase it in terms of what you want to do. Because I'm a big believer in if you show me your time and you show me your money, I'll tell you what you value. But the sad part is, is most people, when you do this exercise is where you're spending your time, where you're spending your money, it doesn't align with their values right? Yeah. They're spending time on things that they're spending time and or their money on all these things. And they're like, I don't get any value out of that. I don't find that worthy. Well, then why are you doing it? Well, yeah. because, you know, I've always done it this way. Well, 
Is that a good reason to like, it, it's hard because it, it's, it's very much changing that inner psychology in you. Like, you know, what do you value? Where are you doing? And if, if that's where you're spending your time and money, good for you. But if it's not, it's time to start rethinking that a little bit. Yeah. And that right there is honestly one of the main reasons why I think doing hard things is so important because whether it's, it's money, relationships, business, uh, just personal development, you know, fitness, all of that deals with learning new skills and characteristics that change you as a person that you can take just not, not, you know, not for money, but you can take it to other challenges and, and obstacles in your way. So I, I love that. Absolutely. Cause I mean, that's what it is, is, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? Um, and that's where it's like, I, I don't dismiss it. I, I was listening to another, uh, podcast I think it was I don't know if it was like Gary V interview or something but it was this guy that um, you know all he wanted to do was be a surf coach and you know they don't get paid very much right but he just wanted to surf every day and teach people how to surf and I don't know this guy was like well why don't you go do it in Thailand and teach the tourists but you can live super cheap and he did it and now he's got like a successful surf business there but it's like relatively successful right like yeah. you know he makes a couple thousand bucks a month which covers his rent and food and everything else, but he gets to surf every day. And so here's a guy that's like living a life that he actually wants. Show me your time, show me your money, and I'll show you what you value. And that's what he values. He likes to teach people how to surf. He likes to surf. It's, it's, it's what he likes to do. And so it's like, the you know, it doesn't need, you don't need to be a millionaire or anything to like do this. It's just, you got to maybe think a little different or just at least challenge the status quo. Like, there's no right or wrong answer here. And that's the hard part. Like I can't, I can't tell you the right path for you, but I can give you some tools and tactics to like what I did. I, I looked at what do we value? Where are we spending our time? Where are we spending our money? Yeah, I love that. Uh, especially because it takes a very deep level of honesty with yourself and, and self-awareness to really figure out what you value and making those changes. And I think the other hard part is, is that our values and stuff change, especially as life goes on. Like we were all different people five years ago. We were all different people a year ago before this pandemic. Like, like let's Seriously. be honest with ourselves, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like in some ways this world is becoming so rigid where for some reason in the mainstream especially in politics, like we don't like people that somehow like change or get better or, or learn something as a person like, oh, you said this 20 years ago. Yeah. And I said some dumb things 20 years ago when I was in high school. Like, does that mean I like have these things, this, the same things today? But like, same thing, like my values in college were very different than my values today. <laughs> my values when I was just dating my wife are different than my values today. Like, and then same thing, pre-kids, after kids, like, it's okay. That's the cool thing is if you can reassess every year, every couple of years or every even life event, right? Like you get a serious girlfriend or boyfriend, like let's reevaluate. You're getting married. Let's reevaluate. Like kind of reevaluate as you go. And that's okay too, because we are always changing, always hopefully growing, but we're always at least changing if we're not growing. Yeah. Uh, do you have any specific uh, process or tools that you use when you reevaluate or, or do anything like that? You know, I think on the money side, it's, it's being organized with your money and everyone's got a different system for it. I'm a big, I'm a, I, like, I like to use apps. There's a bunch of free apps, Mint, Personal Capital, Quicken, you need a budget. But you know, uh, my wife's a spreadsheet junkie. She likes to do the spreadsheets. Uh, but there's also people I know that use planners, man, like pen and paper. Uh, my sister-in-law does this. She's got like a planner book and she writes it all out. She's got a paper calendar, a paper budgeting count planner. Like that's cool too. I think the bigger thing is, is find the system that works for you and then check in on yourself. Uh, you know, especially if you're trying to achieve a money goal or a finance goal is like, am I, what, where am I at? Because you can't make a decision unless you know where you're at. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, well, what lever do I pull? Well, what levers do you have? Most people haven't even taken inventory, I would say, of their finances. Do you need to cut spending? Do you need to earn more? Do you need to do something different? Like figure that out. And then going back to your goals and your time and everything else, like what do you have time for? If you don't have a lot of time, well, maybe you got to cut thing. Maybe you want to, maybe you're going to commit to not eat out this month or something like that. Or if you have time, maybe you're like, I'm going to try something totally different. I'm going to drive for Uber. I'm going to go deliver some food for Postmates or DoorDash. 
um, and earn some more money and take that extra money to get to my goal. Um, and, and really, it's just having these conversations. So it starts with being organized. And so my wife and I are pretty organized with our money. But then as we want to achieve our goals, it's about having conversations about what levers, what actions do we want to take? If you're single, well, it's just with you. <laughs> but like if, you are, if you're in a relationship or, or you're married, like it's definitely having that conversation. And maybe it's even a family conversation too. I actually, uh, I saw a cool family. I mean, we're in this uh, pandemic, so I'm getting food delivered every now and then. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, the, the mom was driving and she had her like, I don't know, early teen kids were in the car and they were the runners basically and dropping the food oh, off at the cool. door. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I don't know what the conversations look like, but I hope that there's some conversations and lessons like why we're doing this, how we're helping, what the goal is, as the family, like you can do these things together. And I think that also teaches a lesson for them. So, you know, that, that's really how you want to handle it is like assess and then see what levers you can pull and what you're comfortable with. Excellent. Or hopefully, maybe you try something that's not comfortable. Just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that story of the mother and her children. Actually, my dad had a similar experience where he had someone knock on his door. And there was a whole family there saying, hey, we have a trailer and we're here to do some yard work. Uh, how much can you pay us? And my dad, they worked out a deal. And uh, my dad has some health problems himself. So it really worked out for both of them. Um, and I love, you know, bringing your family into that. And actually, speaking of side hustles. You started out as an entrepreneur, but at what point did you realize you can not only pay off your debt faster, but really change your life by incorporating paying off your debt and, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and using side hustles? Well, I'm just a big believer. You just said it the right way is and. I'm a big believer in this life that it doesn't have to be or. Like we're not making or choices in these things. Like you can totally make and choices. Like I worked full time and I sold stuff on eBay and I started a blog and somehow my wife didn't leave me because like we still hung out <laughs> together. You know what I mean? Like, and like, it's all hands. Like we still managed to maintain a relationship and I'm not dead. Like, like you can do all these things at the same time. Uh, it's just where you want to spend your time. Cause I'll tell you the things I didn't do. Like I didn't really watch a lot of TV. But it also wasn't my thing. Um, you know, like there's things I, I just didn't do. We didn't, you know, travel a whole ton and spend money on travel. But I'm not a big travel guy. But we are spending more time on travel now with the family and trying to take the kids places because we're in a different season. So like everyone's got a little slightly different scenario there, but it doesn't have to be an either or. It can be an and discussion on how you're doing things. I agree completely. And you also... From what you said, I, th I think you also need to understand your phase of life. As as we've said earlier, um, if you're single, now's the time to grind. You can sacrifice Saturday nights because you don't have to, you know, watch your kids or hire a babysitter or things like that. And, uh, Absolutely, and it's you know, but it is becoming overcoming that psychology a bit too. Like, sacrifice your Friday Saturday nights, go drive for Uber. Oh, but I'm only going to make 50 to 100 bucks. Man, you're still making 50 to 100 bucks. Like, that's awesome. Like, where else in this day and age can you, like, turn on your phone, have no boss, no reporting requirement? Like, you literally click, open an app, sign up, and you say, I'm available, and you go. And then when you're done, you just turn it off, and you're done. And yeah. you can cash out right then and there, and you got your money. So, like, go try it. Because the worst thing that happens is, like, you decide, hey, you know what? I tried it. I made it a little bit. I just, I don't like spending my time for money that way. Maybe I'll try something else. And, you know, it's okay. Maybe someone judges you. Oh, well. Like, what are they doing with their time? Like, you know, yeah. your sister or son watching Netflix at home while you're out driving for Uber. But like on the flip side, in five years, when you've tried some things, made some money, paid off your debt, maybe you're buying a house when your sister is still at home watching Netflix, it's like, how are you buying a house? It's, they're going to be judging you then too, right? Yeah. Because, and they're going to somehow forget all your grinding for the little bit there too, because they never remember. Everyone yeah. that always judges you always seems to forget all the work you put in to get yeah. to that point in time. Yeah. They, they, they only look at the highlight reel and they, they figure like, how, how did you do that? I mean, I never saw you go to the gym. How are you losing weight? I never saw you working extra hard. How are you, uh, uh, doing all these things. 
And, and about the TV, I mean, this is kind of a personal soapbox, but have you ever read uh, 1984 or Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World, all those like dystopian <laughs> books? Yeah, man, you're bringing me back to like high school, like English literature. I feel like yeah. we hit all of those, you know? Yeah, I, I just read uh, 1984 and on all of those, like TV is like, a, and those were written far before TV was as popular as, as it is now. But on all of those books were kind of outlawed and TV was very the norm. And I don't want to be like a, you know, a doomsday, <laughs> like pr prophesy or whatever, but uh, I see, I see trends and it's very unfortunate in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, you know what you do, you watch what you want to watch and stuff, but I just, my whole thing is, is don't complain then. You, you also lose your ticket to like, get to like, be sad about whatever, whatever you're dealing with in your life. Like, yeah. you know, that time could be used to better yourself and whatever that means to you financially, emotionally, uh, physically going to the gym. I don't know, whatever that looks like, but like, you can't say like, Oh, you can't, you just don't, you just lose your ticket. Like, that's all I have to say about that. Like, I don't, whatever you do you, but you just don't get to complain about it. I agree completely. If you made your choice, I mean, you can only really learn from it. You can't complain. Um, totally. And we all need a break, man. Like I, I like, I watch a little bit of like sure. random movies and stuff sure. every single night, but like, you know, it, not a slave to it. Yeah. Nope. And not at all. Yeah. So, um, with the remainder of our time, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and actually talk about your business particularly. And I think that will help our audience because as we've said before, you not only help college students figure out how to, pay off their debt and, and go to school without debt, but also, you know, change their time, change their mindsets and start earning money. So at, at what point did you start taking this from, okay, this is what I'm doing to maybe I can help other people? Well, and I think it was kind of like, so it was when I was finishing college, I started the blog, The College Investor. And it really was kind of like this culmination where I, I don't know. I just had this crazy idea. I was, I was reading a lot of personal finance blogs. I was reading stuff, but you know, I was side hustling. I like to earn more and I like to take that little bit of money and invest it. And I wanted to share my random thoughts on, on these subjects. And this was at the end of, at the end of college. And so I put the blog out there and it really just started as a personal kind of blog to like share my random ideas, <laughs> wow. which we're kind of talking about and touching on here, but yeah. like, Hey, you know, like let's go side hustle. Let's go earn more. Um, and then I started talking a little bit more about like paying off student loan debt as it went along, but it was kind of my journey and that's what it evolved from. So like, I really, really enjoyed talking about it, teaching it. Um, and it started gaining some traction and when I start, especially started talking about my student loan debt battle, I, I had some battles with my own loan servicers where they messed up, like, <laughs> And I was all angry, just like you see in the news today. Like I was like, oh, they're out to get me. And then I started getting all these comments that people were like, me too. Like, oh, they're, they're, and I'm like, wow, I think I'm onto something here. So then I started learning a lot about this whole system. And then I learned how screwed up the whole system is. But then I just continued. I continued sharing my thoughts, how to overcome it, how to navigate it. And it just continued to grow from there. Wow. So would you say that your, your trajectory, your progression was large, largely influenced by your decision to do that blog and kind of share your story because then you were maybe, you were kind of bound to your story and you were bound to doing these things, right? Yeah, yes and no. Like I, definitely the blog was a side hustle. And I mean, it was a side hustle while I was working full time. I graduated, it was a hobby. It honestly made zero money for the first year and a half. Like it wasn't an income stream at all. It was because I liked to share it. But then you know, I started learning. And so, like I said, we all have seasons of life. And so I started learning more about how to write and how to monetize and how to make money online and things like that. And so then I started spending my hobby time there. It was like not selling on eBay. And I was writing more and blogging more. And then I started making a little more money there. And then the progression just continued to grow and grow. Um, but I did that. I mean, I side hustled that thing for eight years before it became my full-time gig. Wow. So it took a long time. And, and honestly, I was very scared to pull the trigger. Like, you know, there's comfort in working a nine to five job versus being an entrepreneur. Like silly comfort things like where my health insurance and retirement accounts coming from. But yeah. it, there's nonetheless comfort in that structure, right? Yeah. Part of me wonders if maybe half of that comfort is the fact that we don't actually have to think about it other than, yes, I, I want health insurance. And no, I don't want health. You know, like we don't have to go out searching for the best deals or things like that. 
Totally. I mean, I think that's part of it is like you get your, your, your menu of benefits, right? You get that yeah. once a year, you pick yeah. a box, but you know, even when you're doing it yourself, you, you still only do it once a year, you pick your stuff. It, it just sucks because you pay a lot more for it. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, it's funny. These, it's a site. Once again, it's psychology, like these psychological things that like keep you stuck there. Like, what am I going to do for health insurance? Well, you just buy it. Like yeah. you don't, it's okay. It is know? what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just make it part of the numbers. Um, so in your, in your business, do you, do you just do the blogging or do you also uh, coach young students and things like that? You know, I just do the blogging and I do a lot of speaking and, and podcasts and now a lot of virtual stuff. Cool. Um, you know, I, I don't do a lot of one-on-one coaching anymore. Mm-hmm. I did a lot more of it early on. Now, I mean, the, the business is just kind of, pretty full time in terms sure. of what it is slash. I also like to spend my time with my family, um, you know, and things like that. So yeah, that's really what we do. That makes sense. So with, uh, with your old clients or with someone asks you today, what should I do? Like starting out ground zero, what are like, what's your basic framework for helping them move from A to Z? Yeah. Number one, we talked about it is get organized. I can't tell you what to do unless you lay it out like income expenses, what your student loans are. Sadly, most people have like four or five student loans. Right. And, uh, you know, one for every year they went to college. And and so like, we got to lay it all out and then it's talking about their goals. Like, well, do you want to go earn some more money or do you want to go on a super fixed budget for your food? Like, what do you value? Like, I I don't know. Everyone's so different. Some people are like, I can live off a a Lara bar or something every day for every meal. And I'm good with that. And that's what I want to do. Well, that's cool. Okay. Do that then. But like other people are like, no, I still want to go out to eat like every single week. Okay. Well then you need to like, look at, let's see how you can earn more money. What does that look like for you? I mean, it doesn't even have to be an app based thing, ride sharing. It could be get a second job, work some overtime at your existing job. It could be so many different things. I mean, there's limitless ways to earn. Um, I think a lot of people have more of a hard time with that when they, they're trying to comprehend, like there are literally limitless ways to earn if you want to put your time to it, just a lot of people don't want to put their time to it. So they look at all these other things that they can do to try to avoid that. But it's funny because that's the one that actually makes the biggest difference. And that's the one that will get you to the financial success so much faster. Um, And then, yeah. And then once we get through that, it's checking in on your plan, executing your plan, you know, following up. Wow. I love what you said there, especially they, they find ways to not have to use their time productively which I think that's like the definition of all the games on our phones and social media sometimes and all the things that we can do just to avoid what we need to do. Right. And it's, and they all cost too. Like, I mean, there's free stuff out there, but it's like, not only are you wasting your time, but in a lot of instances, you're also wasting your money, you know, on these Netflix and HBO. And I saw a thing the other day, you know, everyone's like, you know, cut cable, like, but now in the pandemic, we're all home. Mm -hmm. And now the average person is paying like 70 bucks a month or something in different streaming services, whether they're on Hulu plus or, you know, HBO. And it's like, yeah, got rid of your cable just to spend as much or more on streaming services. Like I don't understand. And it's like, but then on the flip side, do you see how the system here is like designed to like get you? Like they think you think you're doing a good thing and then you end up spending just as much in other ways. I don't know. Part of me wonders if uh, all the the, the major streaming services like collaborate to say, okay, this show is not going to be on Hulu, but it's going to be on Netflix until this date and then it's going to switch and then all that junk. But Right. Make, you, make, make people, make people buy them both. Exactly. Right? But that's exactly. It. So it, it, yeah. So once again, just how are you spending your time and your money? And it, does that align with what you're trying to do? And you know, are you, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's a, it's a framework. It's the psychology though. It's talking through what's holding them back. What, what are you embarrassed? It's always an embarrassment thing. What are you embarrassed about? Yeah. Like, Oh, you don't, I don't want to tell my mom that I'm driving for Uber. Why not? She probably doesn't even know what Uber is. Like, you know, like, but people get hung up on these things. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, Robert, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much. And uh, I, it's given me a lot to think about. I'm actually going to go talk to my wife about money right now after this. But uh, before we close out, let me ask you the questions I, I finished the show with. Uh, based on our conversation today, what one to three action items would you give our audience to do today or this week to improve their lives? Yeah, 
figure out how to get organized with your finances. You do it your way. Maybe it's an app, maybe it's a spreadsheet, maybe it's pen and paper, but get organized. And then number two is figure out what you're doing with your time. Like, what are you doing when you're working, when you're off work? Could you be more effective with your time? And then put the two together when you're all said and done and see if there are ways that you could optimize it. I'm not saying necessarily you have to work more or work less or whatever, but optimize based on what you value, right? Uh, I, and you, like I said, everyone's so different. Like it, it's so hard to generalize. I can't tell you to work more, work less, save money, earn money. But when you figure out that construct of what you're spending, where you're spending your time, you can start to piece together a puzzle that optimizes your life better. Excellent. Awesome. I will put those in the show notes. And then Robert, how can our audience reach out to you, connect with you and see what you're up to? Yeah, so you can find me at thecollegeinvestor.com or you can find our audio show, The College Investor Audio Show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you like to watch, we have a YouTube channel too, The College Investor. Excellent. Awesome. Let me put that up in the show notes. And uh, thank you again, Robert, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, thanks I, for I having me. I had a lot me. of fun. So Yeah, me too. This is great. Excellent. Real quick before we end the show, I just wanted to give you a quick announcement about a new opportunity you as listeners of the Hard Thing Podcast have available to you. Now, in thinking about all the action items I've ever gotten from guests, one of the things that they most often say to do is to find a team, a tribe, or a community that can help push you, help strengthen you and support you, and expect more out of you to help you reach higher levels. Well, that's exactly what we've come up with here at the Hardling Podcast for you. We've created The Forge. Now, you might know The Forge as the name of our Thursday show, and it is. But The Forge is also the community we built to help you band together with like-minded individuals that can help strengthen you, support you, and expect more out of you. When you join The Forge, what you'll get access to is weekly challenges exclusive to the community, which will help push you, help you grow, and help you connect with other people in the community. You'll also get access to special discounts on merchandise from the Hard Thing Podcast, so you can represent what you believe in and save some money. And also, you'll get access to live streamed episodes of our Monday shows and our Thursday shows, which means interactions with guests, as well as you'll be able to see some behind the scenes stuff on our Thursday show when we won't have the chance to edit that out because it's going out live. One of the most important things you'll get access to is the other people in the community. It'll show you people who are local to you, or it'll just connect you with people who think the same way you do. And that's essential for reaching newer levels and doing things that you didn't think were possible. So join The Forge today. Go to theforge.mn.co, band with your tribe, get all these special features, but most importantly, keep doing hard things. What did I tell you? What a great conversation with Robert Farrington. I enjoyed that so much, and it gave me a lot to think about, particularly money-wise. I am thinking a lot about that recently, and... It's something we should all have on our minds because I believe that how you spend your money says a lot about yourself. Maybe not whether or not you are wealthy, but it says how you think. It says what you value, as Robert and I talked about. So I, I highly encourage you to really be cognizant and conscious of what you're spending your money on, what you're spending your time on, because that's what you want more of in your life. That's what you want to grow. That's what you want to invest in. So be very aware of what you're investing your time and your money in. If you don't like it, then stop doing it. But stay tuned for our Thursday episode coming out this Thursday. I'm excited to uh, present it to you. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Until then, guys, keep doing hard things because you will overcome average. <laughs>